Um, so I'm a postdoc researcher at uh, EPFL in Lausanne in Switzerland, and my background is in uh, digital education. Um, so we're building a system here that I'm going to tell you a little bit about. Um, I thought I'd start by doing a very quick report back on a workshop that we did recently with um, uh, Hendrik Drexler and Christian Glan at uh, the workshop was at the Edu uh, European Conference for Technology Enhanced Learning, which is uh, one of the major conferences in Europe for all things digital education. And so we had um, this focus on XAPI and interoperable learning analytics. Um, and we had actually 26 people signed up, which was uh, quite, uh, quite good. A number of people uh, had a lot of different experiences with XAPI, which was great. And of course, some people were curious uh, because uh, they were hearing about it and thinking about using it. Um, so uh, some of the things that kind of came out of the discussions, uh, there was a lot of talk about when should we use XAPI. Um, some people are really kind of adopting it as their basically their internal data storage format on their tools. Um, and is that really a good idea? Uh, especially when we talk about high volume data. So people are doing, for example, eye tracking or uh, sen you know, body sensors, which are generating thousands of messages per second. And if you try to wrap those in uh, as XAPI and send them to a learning record store, um, that becomes very complicated. Uh, there's also a lot of data that's very detailed. Um, so you're recording, adding a concept in a concept map, or you're recording, uh, you know, annotating a document, and then every time you say, is there a recipe for this? Uh, does it make sense for me to spend a lot of time uh, figuring out this recipe? Um, so those were quite interesting discussions, and it was great having, um, sorry, I'm just gonna close the door here. Uh, my three-year-old is demonstrating to be, get permission to watch uh, cartoons. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so it's interesting because we had uh, Peter Brusilovsky in the room, who I think was involved in a lot of the early designs of XAPI in the US. And, and he was kind of pushing back and he was saying, you, you Europeans are crazy because we really designed XAPI as, a, as an interchange format uh, between different systems. So it really mm -hmm. only makes sense to use it when there is a meaningful recipe and there is a system on the other side that would probably care about that data. Whereas you guys are trying to shoehorn it into everything that you're doing. Uh, so mm -hmm. that was quite an interesting discussion. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, ethics uh, and GDPR is a very big deal in Europe with the, the new data protection law, security, anonymity. There was quite a lot of discussion there. Um, uh, and uh, also, so interoperability I'm going to get to because that's, that's my main interest. But in terms of follow-up, uh, we are discussing whether we should create a SIG around this topic inside our organization, so the European Association of Technology Enhanced Learning. Um, we're talking about a white paper and especially thinking about XAPI from the perspective of learning science researchers, um, which might have different needs than you know, some of the other um, stakeholders. So that was, um, any questions about that workshop before I go on? No. Okay. So, um, as I said, I'm at the uh, EPFL and uh, we're building this system for um, designing uh, rich collaborative learning scenarios, uh, synchronous. So it could be in a, in a live classroom where everyone has a laptop or it could be in an online session like what we're doing right now. Um, and so what we're trying to do is to um, make the teacher able to author these kinds of uh, workflows where you have activities at different levels, you have flow of data, uh, you have um, algorithms and so on. Um, so I'm not gonna talk a lot about my system in, in detail. Uh, there are some links in the document, uh, but you have uh, different um, kind of activities. So for example, a quiz, but the activities of course can be configured in many different ways. Um, and we're also uh, very interested in uh, these kind of um, algorithms and inference for learning analytics, but really learning analytics that is live um, and that is used as part of the learning and not something that you do afterwards for research. Uh, so, yes. so we're, for example, um, looking at analyzing traces from collaborative writing processes to in real time detect uh, whether students are um, collaborating 
well, what kind of roles different students are taking and so on. Um, and the, the really cool thing about our system to me is that once you have an algorithm that is taking some kind of trace data and coming up with some kind of inference, uh, we can use it in many different ways. So we can use it for uh, live dashboards for the teachers, for visualizations. Um, we can use it to redistribute student data. So we can say, well, you know, you all wrote a reflection and I'm gonna send you the reflection from this other student based on some, some semantic analysis I did saying that this is what would be interesting to you. Or we can use the same algorithm to group students to say you should in the next activity be working with this other student because of what you guys wrote is semantically similar or semantically different depending on your pedagogy. Mm -hmm. um, or you can even use it to adapt activities. So, I mean, I'm screaming through this, but uh, as I said, um, there's lots of documentation. I'm happy to discuss this um, another time, but uh, kind of giving you a sense of why, you know, what is my interest in XAPI? And it might be a little bit different than, than, than some of the other people. Um, you know, basically, I would like to integrate other kinds of uh, learning tools, simulations, widgets, and so on inside my system. I would also like to make the, the tools and, and algorithms that we are developing available to other systems. Um, so that's kind of my, one of my key, key interests. And in the, one of the interesting discussions we had at the workshop that I just mentioned was where does the logic live? If, uh, so in this example, we have a blue collaborative writing activity. Um, and this collaborative writing activity, of course, is generating a lot of data points because it can track every time you press a button. It knows where you are in the document, uh, what time it is, and so on. But you know, this is what we call behavioral dust because a single key press is really quite meaningless. Um, there's no context to it. So if I made a XAPI statement saying, you know, Peter pressed P uh, in position 150 at 3 p.m., and then I end up with 10,000 uh, XAPI statements like that. It's very hard to make sense, sense of it. So the first step is to go from behavioral dust to a little bit more meaningful statements where we can say, well, Peter actually wrote this sentence um, from three o'clock to 301. And then he took a long break or he moved to another part of the document, but you know, we're kind of compressing a lot of tiny ele elements into a larger logical statement. And then we can also say, add context saying, Peter wrote this sentence uh, in a paragraph that hasn't been edited for two days, a paragraph written by someone else, a uh, paragraph semantically different to what he was writing. He wrote it while someone else was doing something else. So we're adding all this stuff. And mm -hmm. then you could use that stuff in a third phase to say, you know, this is indicative of Peter being a leader, of Peter being the editor, of uh, Peter dominating the, the, the editing process, mm -hmm. all kinds of high level statements. So if we think of this as kind of uh, multiple elements, we have the activity that's generating the trace data, and then we have different kinds of these algorithms. You know, um, we, if, if we think of XAPI, um, as I said, I, th I think having individual XAPI statements uh, about um, you know, individual key presses is meaningless. We could imagine having that first algorithm embedded in the activity um, and then have that algorithm start making these, um, these higher level XAPI statements. But you know, so, so it would be not really a direct um, activity, but it would be a, a level of inference um, or you could even imagine maybe having that top level uh, making a statement, an XAPI statement say, saying, Peter took the leadership role, uh, you know, and that's, that's an XAPI statement. So that's one thing we talked a lot about is do we have these algorithms that are actually themselves making new kinds of, of XAPI statements based on inference. Uh, and then we also talked about this idea of a student model, because if you want to have shared algorithms that do interesting analytics, they don't really want to operate on a stream of events. They want to operate on some kind of state that is being updated whenever there is a new event. And so how would, how would we think of this if, we're, if we were really um, looking for these kind of shareable, um, reusable algorithms? So that's a big discussion. Um, 
that I'm very curious if people have ideas about. But I thought I'd briefly show you what we've done so far with interoperability in Frog, um, which is really just us kind of trying to hack on what we what seems to be possible. Um, as I said, you know, for me the challenge is that. I don't really want to have to build 200 physics simulations from scratch uh, for my system. That seems like a waste of time. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if I take um, these things from GeoGebra or FET or uh, all these kind of systems that exist, and I put them in an iframe in my system, or I use LTI, I really don't get much information out of it um, in terms of the kind of, of learning and orchestration and scripting that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. So. Ideally, I would want something like what's on this slide. If we have a concept map widget tool, um, I would like to be able to configure it in my system. Um, I would like it to be able to be collaborative if I want students working together with it. Um, I would be able, like to be able to put data into it. So if I have a list of concepts from a previous activity or from an algorithm that extracted that from a discussion forum, I'd like to be able to kind of feed it to the concept map activity. I'd like to be able to get the resulting product, the concept map, out of the activity. And then while the activity is running, I want this streaming learning analytics. I want to see what my students are doing um, while they're doing it. And that's, of course, so as far as I know, there is no standard that satisfies all of these requirements. But I'm look, what I'm looking for is, is how can we begin to walk this path? And of course, the streaming learning analytics and XAPI is, is something that I hooked up on. That's kind of how I got into the whole um, XAPI community. Um, and especially through H5P components that uh, mm -hmm. some of you might be familiar with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because these guys um, not only uh, stream XAPI, uh, which is already very interesting. But also it's interesting that they're not just sending it to a learning record store using the REST API or whatever, that's kind of the standard. They actually use uh, something called post message to send from an iframe to the parent um, web page. So if you put it in an iframe, you, the web page itself can listen to that iframe and get messages um, as they're happening. And this actually fits very well with um, the model that I would need. So I'll just quickly show you what that enables us to do so far. Uh, so you are now seeing uh, my web browser, I hope? Yeah. Perfect. So this is Frog, and this is um, the teacher's kind of, so here we've uh, created a little graph, a little um, scenario, and um, we have this H5P activity. Um, now I'm going to start the graph, and I'm going to pull in two students because it's more interesting if we can see someone doing it. So we have here two students, Stian and Anna, and they're going to um, try out this interactive video. And of course, this interactive video um, has these quizzes. So there's a, a very, this is the demo from their, from their homepage. So it's not very advanced as you can see, but there's a quiz here about this berry. And I'm gonna say, uh, here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make a mistake. So I'm gonna say it's a blueberry. Here, I'm gonna make it correct, so I'm gonna say it's a strawberry, right? So what we have here is students interacting with H5P inside Frog. And me as a teacher, I can pull up the dashboard and I can see here that two students participated and the average success rate was 0 0.5. So this is not a very fancy dashboard. I haven't spent time. I could have put in curves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the point is that you're seeing uh, that I'm receiving live data through XAPI um, from these activities and I'm able to give some feedback to the teacher. But I can also use that to actually adapt the learning because I here have an operator uh, that we call, so it's kind of a, a function that splits the students based on their performance. And I've coded it so that the students who are doing well get one kind of activity and the students who are not doing well, people who failed the quiz, get another kind of activity. So if I now go to the next activity, we see here that one of the students is asked to watch a video about strawberries and the other student is uh, sent to a Wikipedia page about strawberries, right? Okay. So uh, this is kind of a silly example, but the idea is to show that you can have an external activity, H5P in this case, but it could be anything that uses the CMI5 quiz standard, 
and it wouldn't make a difference at all to me because it's that's the beauty of XAPI. And you can get this live information to the teacher about how the students are doing, not, and you can actually use it in the teaching to modify what's happening. So um, that's, that's really promising to me. Then I, I want to quickly show you some other activities that are not using XAPI, but are using exactly the same principle of, um, of this post message. So these are uh, widgets from uh, Berkeley. They have this thing called the WISE project, which is uh, kind of a science inquiry platform. And they have all these simulations that they've developed. And these simulations also send messages over using post message. However, they, it's, they're not XAPI messages, but they could be very well. Mm -hmm. And here's an example of me, you know, on the one hand, I'm actually getting logged messages now. So I could have had a dashboard saying how many times has each student run the simulation and so on. But what's even more interesting is that I can capture the actual output of running the simulation. So what's happening here is I'm running a simulation with some temperature probes and it's streaming all the measurements into this graph um, in my application in Frog, which I can then uh, you know, continue working on. I can explore this data. I could uh, you know, uh, do all kinds of analysis on it. And just a final example, which is quite similar, but uh, I can also stream this into a spreadsheet. All right. So, to me, this is um, this is really interesting because uh, for me, what I'm interested in is not just the learning analytics in order to be able to um, and analyze students' learning, but I'm interested in in data portability, so that students who are generating ideas or collecting data with sensors in one place can work with that data um, in another place. Um, and then the final thing I will show you is that we, of course, um, as I was presenting this little, let's see, um, you know, this vision of how I would like other people's um, tools to be available to me, um, I'm also interested in how can I make my tools available to others? And again, what are the uh, APIs or standards or technologies that we can use for that. And so we have uh, for Frog, you know, we've developed um, these different APIs. If different people want to use our activities, um, also based on post message. Um, and so, for example, um, I can say I want to. Uh, inf so basically, what you're seeing here is a very simple app around that's just there because I need to be able to capture the data that's going through the API. And then you have something here embedded in an iframe that's talking to that external page. Um, so for example, I can embed this in my tool where I uh, say I want to embed this activity in Blackboard or in you know, whatever you're using. I want a, a chat. And it's now sending the information here. It's letting me configure the chat here. Uh, the title should be please talk. And it's now sending me the configuration over the post message that I can store in my database. And then I can use that configuration to load the activity. So now I'm, for example, loading a quiz. And when the student is filling this quiz out, we're getting two different things. We're getting log messages. And right now, they're not actually XAPI messages. Um, however, uh, we're working on probably um, changing the format to um, to follow XAPI, but we're also getting the underlying data of the quiz um, so that we can know what the students were answering. Um, and we're getting, uh, and this works, this works um, across multiple students because all of, the, uh, all of the frog activities are multiplayer. So for example, we have this little uh, kind of uh, brainstorming board here. And if I open two windows and I go to um, that, let's see this, Okay, yes, I can move that. If I go to that activity now in two different windows um, and I add here, uh, let's say I add an idea. This is my idea. Hello. Uh, and we see now that this is added to both boards, right? And I can move it and it, it live synchronizes and stuff like that. Um, but I can also specify that I want uh, one group in this window and another group in this other window and through the API. And now we have uh, to uh, students are disconnected. So um, this is, I know I'm moving very, very quickly, but the idea is that we've been trying to experiment with how can we take our uh, activities um, and actually 
make them available to external tools that can embed them inside their platforms um, with all of the kind of rich things that we want. Mm -hmm. And there is actually one platform um, called Grasp, uh, which is uh, the result of some, some large EU projects. So it's actually used in, in quite a lot of different schools. And the problem for them was that they didn't have any live uh, collaboration activities like what all of Frog is. So uh, using this API, they've been prototyping adding Frog apps uh, to uh, their platform. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, you can add a video. Uh, so all of the configuration is happening, it looks like inside Grasp. Then the students load, and now there are two different students looking at videos. And of course, this doesn't look so impressive because you could easily embed a YouTube, but because this is a frog activity that's embedded, the teacher mm -hmm. also gets access to a live dashboard, which is now showing uh, each of the students how far they've gotten in the video, whether they paused it or not. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, so this is kind of a, a, a experiment of us prototyping different um, standards for inter integrating these different systems and uh, looking at how XAPI fits into that, um, that whole story. That's basically mm -hmm. what I want to share with you. That's very, very interesting. Hi, uh, Jonathan, are you leaving? I, yeah, I guess Jonathan will be interested in this. And um, Pancake, I uh, is has been leading the video COP in SAPI community. Mm -hmm. So, any question for Stian? So, um, Frog can work with SAPI data and non SAPI data. Yes. Um, however, right now it's actually it's quite hacky. Uh, we don't have full support for all the specs. I'm basically reading index API from uh, from H5P, for example, and then I'm picking out the one, you know, following the standard. I'm looking for the for the data points that are interesting to me, um, and I'm looking at how much more we want to go forwards with making all of our analytics data uh, compliant with XAPI specs. How we can? I'm very interested in finding other tools that are free, ideally open source that it would be interesting for us to integrate because for me, I'm very uh, kind of opportunistic. If, if there's someone who wants to use our tools and who would use the XAPI data in a meaningful way, then I would spend more time uh, producing XAPI data. And if I find a tool that I can use in Frog that, gener that is giving me really interesting XAPI data, then I would spend more time parsing it or, or you know. So yeah, and yeah. we're still ex exploring it in a way. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, try to come up SAPI profile is it, kind of crazy because it, uh, it's true that it's hard to implement SAPI profile. But if through this kind of open source widget or even open source data analytics resources, it's possible. Yeah, and that's that's. Um, what, I'll just I'll just quickly. Um, so I mean that's one of the concerns because so much of, of the stuff that's happening in Frog and uh, the log messages that we capture are very specific to each activity. So we have you know, a programming uh, environment where people are, are running tests and, and they're editing their code and so on. We have a, a concept map where we say people add concepts. And so we are capturing all of that data, uh, but almost none of it matches any existing profiles. And uh, so, if we're sending that out as XAPI messages, it probably doesn't make sense to anyone else out there other than you know, video and quiz and those kind of very, very traditional things. Um, so um, I think someone is talking. Is it John or Pancake? Um, hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, I wanted to check if uh, you are using any specific profile for uh, video. And if you have checked the video profile for uh, the studio app. Uh, so I, I've been following a little bit the discussions about the video profiles. Uh, we're not currently doing that because we have our own video player built in that uh, is native to ours. And uh, I, I could make that video player um, produce XAPI data in uh, following the video profile, but until someone says that they want that, 
I'm, I'm, I, because, you know, I'm a researcher and there's, you know, very few people working on this. It's not a commercial product. So um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not doing things just for doing it. And, I, and we have chosen not to use XAPIs to internal format because we don't think it's suitable. So to us, it's a question of uh, interoperability. And then we have to have someone who says, yes, if you send me the, the video profile um, data, then I'm going to be doing really interesting stuff with it. It could be even a dashboard. If someone had a really cool dashboard or a learning analytics engine that could take our video profile data and display it back to us or, comment or do inferences based on it, that would be really interesting to me. And, and that, that would be absolutely worth my while to, to output standardized data. Okay, uh, John Keevan had worked on uh, <clears throat> adding XAPI uh, video profile to H5P. So uh, it is not published. Uh, H5P guys are still reviewing that code. But um, if you're interested in that, John might be able to help you uh, use video profile on H5P. So that code is already there and working, but it is not uh, published uh, or released by H5P. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, all the Fox um, resources are uh, open source, right? Yes. Yeah. And ha have you integrated with uh, some kind of open source uh, like LMS or platform? So so we uh, we support LTI um, and uh, well we're not so we're basically just using LTI for single sign on. So usually when we use Frog with students, they go into Moodle or um, Canvas and they, you know, click on a link and then they get into Frog uh, into the right session and we know who they are so they don't have to log in or manage usernames. But we're okay. not, you know, but then they're in a whole Frog session that might have lots of activities. We're not kind of taking each individual activity and we could um, do that as well. We haven't done that. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so, so that's, you know, but I'm also interested in, in deeper integration with LMSs. So for example, as I said, Frog, uh, every activity in Frog supports uh, synchronous live collaboration. And uh, we have this API where you can specify when you load Frog, whether the student is in group one or group two or group three. So what would be really interesting for me is if it was possible in Moodle to say, I have split the students in three groups in Moodle, and now I wanna embed um, Frog, but the students in group one should be collaborating with each other. From what I understand, though, the, the Moodle external tool act, uh, API doesn't actually expose that kind of group information. Oh. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, so those are the kind of things. Or uh, if we send XAPI, H5, H5P has already developed a Moodle plugin that will read that XAPI data and write it to, to Moodle. So, I mean, we're very interested in those kind of integrations. So in short, the meaning of XAPI, uh, one of the meaning could be more thorough and detailed information like you say the group information yeah so part of, part of the question to me is going back to you know my 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 vision uh, if i want to call it that um you know which parts of this uh diagram should xapi uh support and which parts should it not support and we should try to come up with other ways of doing things so for example at the uh, workshop, someone mentioned the XAPI document uh, API and state API, and actually nobody else in the workshop had ever heard about that because we've all been so focused on the events. And oh. I just actually had time to look at that today, and it looked really interesting as a way of storing state, for example. So a widget can kind of store and update uh, state. Yeah. Um, and that's something that we could work with, but the problem is I don't know if there are any tools out there that actually support that API. And if they don't, then there's no point in me implementing it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, It's John Costa. I'm pretty sure that a lot of the um, uh, e-learning tools uh, for quiz development and stuff like that uh, are using state because they're, they're keeping track of where you left off question wise and things like that. Mm -hmm. Almost. But yeah, the state problem is that none of the, uh, none of the L, RSs that are out there now, the commercial ones, will let you have a view into this state, except for, um, oh gosh, the veracity is uh, starting to do that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I had a quick question before I, I need to jump off. You talked about making your modules portable and doing integrations and stuff. So 
my work has revolved around taking different ebook um, platforms and making that act as its own like micro LMS, basically mm -hmm. and build all the assessments, build the videos and things like that into it. So tools like what you're creating here that, that give, you know, deeper learning um, capabilities would be ideal to, to kind of weave into that whole mix and either jump out to them from the book or launch them inside frames inside of the ebook. But uh, basically the ebook has become sort of a curation platform for all kinds of learning content mm -hmm. in all different media types and modes. And mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be uh, really cool. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Um, okay. So uh, looking at your chat question, um, we can't make our modules as portable as H5P because, uh, you know, with H5P, they basically, it's a downloadable file and you drop it and it just works, which is awesome. Uh, the problem with that is that we have uh, live collaboration and that requires a server uh, until we're all on the distributed uh, internet. Um, right. So, I mean, basically what, so the way Frog is designed is that each uh, we call it activity type, but it's basically a tool like a quiz or a video player. Um, they're all modules that we're trying very hard to make it as easy as possible to make new modules. And our goal is actually to have Frog be the easiest way for people to build new collaborative activities and to be a platform where people would want to author new tools. Um, and so we're trying to, to abstract kind of the hard stuff of like keeping data live synchronized across student groups of, of collecting learning analytics of login, all that stuff. Um, so the activity types are all kind of standalone uh, from a developer perspective, but they can't run alone because they need the frog server to do all that magic. And so what we did was we said, well, what if the frog server can kind of run headless instead of uh, being guided by some kind of a, a learning scenario that a teacher develops as, as you were just briefly seeing on my screen, um, it can just be guided by some external API that says, hey, I just want that specific activity with this specific configuration for, you know, student group three, and you just, you just serve that up. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's still fairly flexible, I think, and it, it, you know, given that it's open source, it can easily be hosted uh, in different places and stuff. Um, so I'd be really happy to, to talk to you more about your use cases and maybe do some experimentation with you. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's follow up. Does Jesse have your, uh, your contact info? Actually yeah, and if you go, you're, oh, you're in this group. Yeah. Okay. Yes, maybe send out the email. Sure. Yeah. To and if you, you go to, to the Google the doc for this meeting, there's a bunch of links to videos about Frog and there's a link to our, our GitHub repo and, and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. So awesome. thank you. Yeah. So um let me send out some emails uh, also, uh to John Costa and also um Johnson is leading a group uh doing um, connectors to learning analytics resources. Yeah. yeah. So, um, for example, the CMU, they have a discourse DB. Mm -hmm. I think that might be relevant with your research. And yeah, also, I've talked um, to Carolyn Rose about that as well. And yeah, I'm part of that group. I just haven't had time to be very active. But, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to follow up with this um, for sure. Yeah. 